Test 1. Listen carefully. In this test, there are three words to a line. I'm going to read one word from each line. Beside the word I read, there is a letter. Share this letter in your answer sheet. Here are two examples. Example 1. Big. The word I read was B-E-G. Big. So, the correct answer for example 1 is B. This is recorded by shade answer space B against number 1. Example 2. 10. The word I read was T-E-N. 10. So, the correct answer for example 2 is C. Now, get ready to answer the rest of test 1 on your answer sheet. Start at number 1. Number 1. Sit. Number two, cat. Number three, hat. Number four, park. Number five, file. Number six, ban. Number seven, blaze. Number eight, sleet. Number nine, pelt. Number 10. Lark. Test 2. Listen carefully. In this test, there are three words to a line. I'm going to read one word from each line. Beside the word I read, there is a letter. Share this letter in your answer sheet. Here are two examples. Example 1. Seeds. The word I read was S E E D S seed. So the correct answer for example one is B. This is recorded by shade answer space B against number one. Example two. Bride. The word I read was B R I D E bride. So the correct answer for example two is C. This is recorded by shade answer space C. Against number two. Now get ready to answer the rest of test two on your answer sheet. Start at number eleven. Number eleven. Lead. Number twelve. Shaw. Number thirteen. Send. Number 14. League. Number 15. Sight. Number 16. Grazing. Number 17. Called. Number 18. Booth. Number 19. Pill. Number 20. Kiosk. Test 3. Listen carefully. In this test, there are four words to a line. I'm going to read one word from each line. Beside the word I read, there is a letter. Say this letter in your answer sheet. Here are two examples. Example 1. Which? The word I read was W-I-T-C-H. Which? So, the correct answer is A. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space A against number one.
Example 2. Myth. The word I read was M-Y-T-H. Myth. So the correct answer is A. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space A against number 2. Now get ready to answer the rest of test theory on your answer sheet. Start at number 21. Number 21. Swan. Number 22. Port. Number 23. Home. Number 24. Seat. Number 25. Bird. Number 26. Cut. Number 27. Stalk. Test 4. Listen carefully. In this test, there are three sentences in each group. I'm going to read one sentence from each group. Beside the sentence I read, there is a letter. Share this letter on your answer sheet. Here are two examples. Example 1. It is raw. The sentence I read was C. It is raw. So the correct answer for example 1 is C. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space C against example 1. Example 2. This team has power. The sentence I read was A. This team has power. So the correct answer for example 2 is A. This is recorded by Shade Nancy Space A against example 2. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 4 on your answer sheet. Start at number 28. Number 28. It was a pause. Number 29. She spelled bad. Number 30. He saw a foundry. Number 31. Don't trace her. Number 32. He said late. Number 33. They played all day. Number 34. It was heard. Test 5. In this test, the word that you will hear on the tape does not appear on your word list. That word only rhymes with one of the words on the list. Listen to this word. Stink. Which one of the four words in example 1 rhymes with stink? The correct word is sink. The other words do not rhyme with stink. The letter written against sink is A, and this is recorded by Shade Nancy Space E against example 1. Listen to this word. Pelt. Which one of the four words in example 2 rhymes with pelt? The correct word is belt. The other words do not rhyme with pelt. The letter written against belt is B, and this is recorded by Shade Nancy Space B against example 2. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 5 on your answer sheet. Start at number 35. Number 35. Stopping. Number 36. Boil. Number 37. Cut. Number 38. Delay. Number 39. Torn. Number 40. Graze.
Number 41. Starring. Number 42. Patch. Test 6. You are now going to hear some questions and answers. The questions will all be different and the answers always the same. You have to choose the one question which goes with the repeated answer. Here are two examples. Who borrowed your newspaper? He borrowed my newspaper. Did Fred borrow your newspaper? He borrowed my newspaper. Did he tear your newspaper? He borrowed my newspaper. The correct answer is C. Because he borrowed my newspaper answers the question, Did he steal your newspaper? This is recorded by Shade and Answer Space C against number 1. Example 2. Did the lady slap the boy? The man slapped the boy. Did the man cane the boy? The man slapped the boy. Who slapped the boy? The man slapped the boy. The correct answer is B. Because the man slapped the boy answers the question, Did the man cane the boy? This is recorded by Shading Answer Space B against number 2. In the test which follows, you will hear only the answers. The questions will not be read. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 6 on your answer sheet. Start at number 43. Number 43. They will play the match. Number 44. Betty sang a song. Number 45. She fills the bucket with water. Number 46. He loves Kwame. Number 47. Smith ate four mangoes. Number 48. He was hungry. Number 49. They danced to the tune. Number 50. Asian plays football. Number 51. It is money. Number 52. The play is boring. Test 7. You're now going to hear some short conversations. After each conversation, read the three statements on your question paper and decide which of them is correct. Share the appropriate space on your answer sheet. Here is an example. He said the exercise was well done. That's what he said. Both are doubtful to whether the exercise was well done. The correct answer, therefore, is statement C. This is recorded by Shade and Answer Space C. Now get ready to answer the rest of test 7 on your answer sheet. Start at number 53. Number 53. Kwame visit us today. Will he? Number 54. George is a married man. Is he? Number 55. Would you care for some oranges? No. Number 56. They say his car is beautiful. That's what they say. Test 8. You're now going to hear a short conversation between two speakers, a man and a woman, and a narrative. Both the conversation and the narrative will be played to you twice. Immediately after hearing each of them, you will be asked two questions. From your question paper, decide on the correct answers. On your answer sheet, share the space of the appropriate letter. There are no examples for this test. Therefore, get ready to start at number 57. The conversation. It is amazing how Ghanaian drivers and pedestrians are not law abiding.
They use the road anyhow with no respect for road signs and human life. Yes, it is unbelievable that because of money, some commercial car drivers take the law into their own hands. It's a common sight these days that to beat traffic jam, drivers drive on the shoulders of the road meant for pedestrians. They speed up and blow their horns to scare pedestrians away. If they refuse or do not hear or do not see them, the drivers may insult them or accidentally hit them with their cars. They are simply heartless. If they kill all the pedestrians, who will they transport for money? Last week, a TD commercial van ran on one of the feet of a schoolboy at Tafo. The driver was in a hurry and wanted to beat the long traffic jam. It was tragic and pathetic. The mother wept bitterly. Poor mother. But sometimes the problem can be blamed on the pedestrians. They walk anywhere along the road and cross the road anyhow. Just as drivers do not respect zebra crossings, so do pedestrians. About 90% of pedestrians use zebra crossings. Interestingly, even when pedestrians are not using zebra crossings to cross the road, they cross the road leisurely, expecting the speeding car to break. This is serious. It's about time we learned to be patient and became law abiding in order to save lives on our roads. Now the conversation again. It is amazing how Ghanaian drivers and pedestrians are not law abiding. They use the road anyhow with no respect for road signs and human life. Yes, it is unbelievable that because of money, some commercial car drivers take the law into their own hands. It's a common sight these days that to beat traffic jam, drivers drive on the shoulders of the road meant for pedestrians. They speed up and blow their horns to scare pedestrians away. If they refuse or do not hear or do not see them, the drivers may insult them or accidentally hit them with their cars. They are simply heartless. If they kill all the pedestrians, who will they transport for money? Last week, a TD commercial van ran on one of the feet of a schoolboy at Tafo. The driver was in a hurry and wanted to beat the long traffic jam. It was tragic and pathetic. The mother wept bitterly. Poor mother. But sometimes the problem can be blamed on the pedestrians. They walk anywhere along the road and cross the road anyhow. Just as drivers do not respect zebra crossings, so do pedestrians. About 90% of pedestrians use zebra crossings. Interestingly, even when pedestrians are not using zebra crossings to cross the road, they cross the road leisurely, expecting the speeding car to break. This is serious. It's about time we learned to be patient and became law abiding in order to save lives on our roads. Number 57. From the conversation, we learned that. Number 58. According to the conversation. Now the narrative. Let us take a sober look at one of the many ancient virtues that Sunday school teachers used to make us believe will take us to heaven. Sister Victoria preached temperance. Sister said that everything was good for our souls provided it was done with temperance. Many of my classmates love the word temperance because as Sophia used to say, the word came tripping off our tongues and made us sound learned. Modern scientists have gone through tons of research material and have come full circle to conclude that if we want to live safe and sound, we should do everything with moderation. Science says that sleep is a tonic for our bodies, provided the habit is not overindulged in. Six hours of sleep each night will slumber away a third of our lives. Ten hours of sleep each night will make us grow old before our time. Heart surgeons tell us that gentle daily exercise protects us from heart attacks, but that irregular outbursts of vigorous exercise will kill us in no time. Beauticians warn us that occasional smiling relaxes the muscles of the face, but that persistent grinning from ear to ear disturbs the smoothness of the face and makes us wrinkle up and look old before our time. The conclusions of both religion and science merge into the single lesson that for anything to give us its full advantages, it should be done with lukewarm indifference. 
Tony is not at all sure that he likes temperance for the welfare of his soul, nor moderation for the good of his body. He does not find either virtue interesting enough. His main consolation is that his two colleagues, Boat and Equia, also dislike indifference. Now the narrative again. Let us take a sober look at one of the many ancient virtues that Sunday school teachers used to make us believe would take us to heaven. Sister Victoria preached temperance. Sister said that everything was good for our souls provided it was done with temperance. Many of my classmates love the word temperance because as Sophia used to say, the word came tripping off our tongues and made us sound learned. Modern scientists have gone through tons of research material and have come full circle to conclude that if we want to live safe and sound, we should do everything with moderation. Science says that sleep is a tonic for our bodies, provided the habit is not overindulged in. Six hours of sleep each night will slumber away a third of our lives. Ten hours of sleep each night will make us grow old before our time. Heart surgeons tell us that gentle daily exercise protects us from heart attacks, but that irregular outbursts of vigorous exercise will kill us in no time. Beauticians warn us that occasional smiling relaxes the muscles of the face, but that persistent grinning from ear to ear disturbs the smoothness of the face and makes us wrinkle up and look old before our time. The conclusions of both religion and science merge into the single lesson that for anything to give us its full advantages, it should be done with lukewarm indifference. Tony is not at all sure that he likes temperance for the welfare of his soul, nor moderation for the good of his body. He does not find either virtue interesting enough. His main consolation is that his two colleagues, Boot and Equia, also dislike indifference. Question 59 According to the narrative, Question 60. According to the narrative, 